Hi everyone, this is Jim. I wanted to uh, start out this video by uh, talking about some of the changes that uh, recently happened at OGS, the uh, online Go server. So the, the biggest change, and uh, yeah, the main one I wanted to talk about, is um, they introduced a new rating system. So if we go down here, um, this is what the older system looked like, and they would show your rating here. Um, you can see my rating here is it's actually 15Q. It shows it intermediate between 15 and 14, but it shows up as 15Q, and then they had this chart. Um, but they changed the underlying technology to use a Glico 2 rating system from an older ELO system. And this is my new rating, and in fact, it corresponds to 13Q. Um, so, <laughs> so I got a boost. I, I'm now at 13Q. Um, uh, so it's interesting. I, at first, I, I was wondering how this uh, compares to other rating systems. I, I was reading that um, they, on average, your, your rating went up by about, your rating improved by about 2Q with the new rating system. But not everybody was affected the same way. Some people's ratings actually uh, uh, got worse instead of getting better. And there were, there were some complaints about that. People don't complain when their rating gets better, but they complain if their rating gets worse, even though uh, the results are the same. Uh, let's see. So um, one thing I ran across as I was uh, looking at ratings was um, there was this page on Sensei's library uh, which compares the uh, rankings of different uh, ranking systems uh, throughout the world and it includes uh, the Go servers, the common Go servers, and also the Go associations in Japan, China, Korea, Europe, and AGA is the American Go Association. So OGS is the one I've been playing on most and these are before the uh, the changes so on the old system I was at uh, 15Q and it turns out well there are two entries so 15Q corresponds either to 13Q or 14Q in the AGA and 12Q in uh, KGS uh, this is a very common Go server KGS um, let's see they didn't have Taijim here so uh, I guess they didn't have enough data for that. So anyway, by improving my rating from 15Q to 13Q, it's sort of bringing it in line with the AGA ratings and the KGS ratings. So, and you see the Japanese system is fairly close as well. If we compare these, they're all within one Q of each other. Another interesting point is that uh, in China and Korea, these rating systems are much more uh, strict, <laughs> you might say. Uh, so my uh, my 13Q rating here in AGA is only good for uh, 17Q in China or 19Q in Korea. And they're just tougher over there, I guess. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Is there anything else? You know, they, they do show your activity by the size of these bars. Looks like my most active month was August of uh, last year. Let's see, I just started playing in December. And so if we go up to December here, um, you know, my, my peak rating around here, if you look at this, was, uh, I don't know if you can read these small numbers here, but it gets up to the 12Q range. Um, and then right now, it seems like I had a dip recently and uh, and then improved a little bit to 13Q. Um, the, uh, let's see, purple are the losses and greens are the wins. And, uh, and then the, the bars when, when they're darker they show you're facing uh let's see uh well no it's different for the green okay the dark bar in the green shows you're facing stronger opponents and the light bar is your weaker opponents and in these uh and the in the losses it's opposite these are the the losses against weaker opponents and these are losses against stronger opponents so i know it gives gives you some idea of how often you play weaker versus stronger opponents and uh, and the effect on the rating um, and then also how frequently, I guess I haven't been playing as much uh, lately. <clears throat> they do say that you can make single digit Q uh, within a year if you really work and study at it. Uh, but I guess I haven't been working hard enough. After about a year, let's get to December. Yeah, that's why I chose December. Yeah, I got to, uh, well, if you believe the system, I made it up to uh, 12Q. But um, <clears throat> anyway, I'm at 13Q now. And I've, But uh, it does kind of uh, encourage me to play a little bit more in the sense that, uh, well, if I can make single digit Q, that would be a nice uh, milestone. And I, I just uh, got a couple steps closer through it without without any particular effort. Um, let's see, what else did I want to say? Um, the uh, 
display window. I think I've shown this before. These are, uh, you can choose your, um, what size board you want and your time control. There's also, if you want to go back to the old way of doing it, there's the custom uh, button, which allows you to just uh, put a game up uh, with any characteristics and then it will show up, um, it'll show up down here in this, uh, uh, in this list and you can, uh, you can find uh, you can just wait for someone to uh, respond to that, or you can go to the auto match pairings using any of these uh, other buttons, blitz or normal. I guess computer will immediately match you against a computer. Um, and yeah, the other thing I wanted to say was um, there is this games page that you can click on, and this shows this shows the live games that are currently being played. And this is uh, pretty interesting. I do this sometimes. You can find games between stronger players and you know kind of follow along and see if you can figure out what's going on and there's uh, several pages of displays looks like there's eight pages of nine games each so you can go along and find a game that uh, is uh, interesting looking or near the beginning if you want to follow it from the beginning um, and you can see the ranks of the players that are playing let's see so here's a game Here's a, uh, is this a full-size game or a 13? Yeah, this is a full-size game. It's not too far along between a 10K and an 8K. And uh, you can go back and see see how they got to this position. And then you can catch up and watch them play. So I will do this sometimes. And uh, one time when I, uh, one time recently I was watching a game and, well, I just wanted to have some Go content for this video. So let's go to my... Um, library you can you can save files and then import them into this library and so there's this game i was watching between these two players they were at the time they were rated 3q and 2q um, although when i bring it up here it shows their current rating which is 4q and 4q so i guess these are two players that got affected by the rating change and it made the rating slightly worse anyway this is um the game and i just thought to have some go content on this uh, on this video, I would go through the game and talk about it. Um, I think it's fun to watch the two players, particularly if they're you know not they're stronger than you, but not so much stronger that you can't understand their moves. <laughs> so it's in the, some middle range, and um, you can try and guess what their moves are, and then when they play something surprising, you can see how it works out. So so far, this looks like a, a very normal opening. There's uh, both sides have grabbed a four four point and then a 4-3 point, and then black approaches, and white attaches on top. This is a opening, or a Joseki in the corner that I almost never play, so it was interesting to me from that point of view. I mean, it looks like um, white maybe would like to build influence over on this side of the board, and so he's playing on top. Um, the, the one I play most often is just the back off here, um, and of course you can also play um, a pincer, here, here, you know, somewhere around here, you can do a pincer on that stone, or you can kick the stone. I think those are the only moves that I've ever played here. So it was interesting to see this move and to watch how this Joseki goes. So black uh, Hane's on this side, so maybe he's looking to build influence here. And uh, and white extends, and extends in this direction. I, I always think to extend uh, laterally here, uh, but he's extending vertically. And so this, uh, this looks like a Joseki. I, I uh, have seen this pattern before. And white gets the corner and black gets influence on this side and white gets influence on this side. So it looks like an interesting setup. And that, yeah, I think this sort of completes, completes the Joseki. They fight a little bit in the corner and then they extend uh, to their respective sides. So sort of a peaceful Joseki. And then, then black changes direction over to the right side. And white approaches down here. And we get a similar Joseki, but uh, Black does something different. He doesn't follow exactly the same pattern, which would be an extension. Instead, he Hane's here, and White reacts to this by um, by securing this corner and placing a stone here. So I think all this is uh, so far so good. But this um, <coughs> this stone here, uh, the white stone at 05 that's cutting these groups apart. Sometimes this stone is just uh, sacrificed, I think. Uh, well, I think white gets into trouble trying to save it. So, But it is cutting, 
it's uh, you know he's preserving the stone and so black is cut into two groups there's this group here in the corner which is probably okay and then there's this group on the side and then white has these two stones here which keep black cut across and white gets uh, influence down here but um, well black jumps out in the center so it's a question of uh, which group is strong and which group is weak I think we have two weak groups here right white has this group of three stones it's weak and black has this group of three stones it's weak but there's a difference here in that uh, black stones have all this open territory to run out to whereas white stones um, they've got black on both sides and we'll see black taking advantage of this by placing a stone here and uh, so I think black gets the better of this fight look at how he's surrounding white's group and uh, well white jumps in here and this is successful actually black kind of limits the invasion but white connects up and so white has uh, successfully reduced black's side over here um, and uh, managed to connect so this group is all connected um, so it's hard to say is this is this good for white or is this good for black like I said at first I thought this was good for black but then but then white jumped down here and, and scooped out some of black's territory but this group still doesn't have eyes and it's still kind of uh, in hostile territory so it looks like there's going to be a fight to see if this group can survive but at the same time while white is uh, playing over here and forcing black to respond um, white still has potential large potential over here so if white can survive this fight and you know gain a tempo or two a, a sente move or two to come back and secure some territory over here uh, i think this might be very good for white so let's just watch how this fight goes um, so black plays one stone over here white responds and then black returns with this diagonal move continuing to harass this group white jumps out and black doesn't uh, follow very closely but just jumps out this group needs to live too of course and white invades over here on this side um, so that's that's a, a big invasion and uh, black prevents these two groups from connecting by making this knight's move here um, so now white jumps out once more wants to have uh, a look to the outside it doesn't want to get surrounded and have to make eyes in here although maybe there's potential and I was wondering one possibility might be for uh, white to just kind of try and settle here make an eye here and make an eye down here somehow but maybe that's too many moves maybe it's too slow anyway uh, black returns to uh, strengthen the corner and take a look at these invading stones and we get this fight over here um, of the uh, invasion looks like white sacrifices some stones to try and build some strength here and I thought um, <clears throat> I thought white was going to be able to live here but black played this move so this looks like a very interesting move it, it seems to kill <laughs> it seems to kill this uh, the uh, this group here by preventing it from making two eyes um, if you imagine white trying to surround this stone it can make a, an eye here by surrounding that stone but then where's the second eye black can hane here while uh, while white is surrounding this stone and so i don't see how white can actually get two eyes in this area once this once this move was played at n18 so very interesting uh, shape to try and remember uh, or think about um, you know white surrounds that stone and then jumps out and so at this point yeah it's pretty clear there's only going to be one eye here um, and black keeps keeps the group cut off so at this point i think the fight is good for black uh, black uh, connects here connects these two stones over to this side um, this group maybe is is a little weak but it's got stones that can connect up to over here so let's see how the fight continues white tries to separate these groups you know when you've got a weak group uh, you know something some sometimes you can save it by attacking your opponent's weak group um, but black plays down here and I think this allows black to stay connected so we'll see how this fight goes um, yeah white white managed to push through here um, and uh, but it's uh, black managed to separate these two groups completely so let's see if we back up 
When black played here, white responded with this push here. And so maybe if he wanted to, he should have tried connecting here. But this group, even if it's all connected, still doesn't seem to have two eyes. So looks like um, white has just decided to abandon this group. And maybe he's going to try and use these stones here to attack uh, over here. We have, we have some stones here that perhaps could be captured. And so let's see if this white group can survive. Um, and yeah, this all gets filled out pretty much as I was expecting. White jumps into the corner and tries to connect over on this side. And black keeps everything separated. And um, at this point, well, black can connect here. Yeah, black does connect. Yeah, and white switches direction. So at this point, I was thinking, well, white should just uh, concede. But then I realized uh, there's there is a capturing race here. Um, so this is this uh, black group is cut off too. It's not just the white group that's cut off. This black group is cut off. So this might be an interesting uh, point at which you would try to um, uh, do some uh, uh, counting. See if you can figure out who is going to win this capturing race. So there's a capturing race between these black stones and these white stones. They're both groups that are cut off and they don't have uh, two eyes and they can't uh, connect. So who's, who's going to win that capturing race? You can pause the video and think about it for a while and then I'm going to uh, count it out as, as I saw it. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm going to start talking about it now. If you want to think about it some more, pause the video here. But um, so for this group, it's pretty straightforward. It has one, two, three, four, five. It has five liberties. And this group has one, two, three, four liberties. So it looks like black has the advantage. But it's white's turn to move. And, uh, and it has this, you know, loose connection down here. So how about if white just starts attacking immediately? Um, and black needs to start producing liberties. White keeps attacking. Black goes here. And now let's, let's count this. It's one, two, and that group will be gone. Um, and black still has three liberties. So I guess this is just a win for black. Um, let's see, if, black connect, if white connects here, it doesn't help because it doesn't add a liberty. It's, uh, this liberty is replaced by this liberty here. Say white goes here, black just goes there, and now white attacks here, and black takes. So that didn't help. Um, you can get one step closer by just continuing here with this attack and black goes here, and white goes here, and it's one step away from capturing, but black captures first. So that group is dead, and uh, and this group is dead over here. So it does look like uh, this is a win for black, and I was kind of expecting white to, oops, let's go back to the game. Uh, in the game, white played here. Um, it, but it looks like uh, white just shifted direction, so White gave up on these groups, so he recognizes all this is Black's territory, and he fights to create uh, some territory of his own, and Black invades very deeply. And uh, so now it's a struggle to, uh, can Black scoop out enough territory in this large white area so that uh, the balance will still be in Black's favor? Um, and it looks like he made a living shape over here, and... Uh, grew this group a little bit. Let's continue. Um, white expanded out here. And anyway, this group that was um, was fighting for its life, uh, starting with the corner invasion, this uh, black has not severely attacked it. So it looks like this group is still uh, alive. And black is more concerned at this point with just uh, preserving his territory, making sure this group is alive. And uh, well, this is interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think uh, this is necessarily alive. Only uh, six uh, liberties there. Yeah, so he branched out a more, one, two more. He's got eight, eight liberties along here. So I think if you have a row of eight, this is alive, right? White can honey here. You can block. White can honey here. You can block. And then white can jump in the middle. But you've got four spaces in the middle. And so wherever white goes, 
um, then you get a space. So anyway, a line of eight stones along the sign like that is alive. So black created a living group there. And, uh, and then black is trying to scoop out some territory here from the center. And also, well, not just scooping out territories, also needs to make sure that this group, which is cut off, stays alive. Um, and it seems like he does that successfully as well. And uh, white, white keeps black surrounded, prevents um, black from going any further. Well, tries to. And it seems like black is pretty successfully expanding his group. Um, and at the end, now white still has this, this big area here and this big area here. But I think between the captured stones, yeah, and we're getting into the end game here. So we're just single point moves being played here and there. And they're just trying to take as many points as they can. Um, so it's interesting to go over that step by step. Okay, and then finally, uh, this this situation got resolved. You always have to be alert as uh, as your group comes under fire. You have to be alert that you don't get you don't get uh, surrounded and captured instead. So at some point you may need to uh, take that group, and then this group over here is dead as well. White tries to jump in here. I think this invasion didn't work. Yeah, and then black blocked, and then um, they stopped and counted at this point. And let's do the analyze game here. No, estimate score. And the score is black by 17. So black did uh, capture all of this territory and, and capture those stones that I, I marked as dead. So white had to give those up. But white did get a large amount of territory here. And if you look at um, the game result, um, territory, oh, just 30 versus 70. I was going to say, I thought the territory was closer Okay, yeah, it wasn't counting to the end. I was thinking that the territory, I maybe just think of a different game. Let's go back to this view. I was thinking the territory and the board is about the same, and, and actually the advantage comes from all the stones that uh, Black captured. But uh, anyway, well, that's it for this video. I thought that was an interesting game, and I just wanted to let you know about some of the changes that were going on at OGS. So uh, I will see you again soon. Bye.